Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Challenge Accepted. Uh, in this challenge, we are going to be attempting to uh, get the fastest time to orbit in Kerbal Space Program uh, RSS. Uh, this is a pretty much stockified uh, 1.2.2 install. It was built to uh, Tyler Riaz's specifications for his uh, collaborative program going on currently in Twitch TV. Um, I've made I started a fresh save file for this and made no altercations to the default settings as per the instructions. Um, and basically it's to see what the, is the shortest time to orbit you can manage without blowing up. And it certainly does seem to be the problem. So this is my first build. It's a heat shield, a Saturn core, and five RS-25 engines. Uh, figuring that was probably not enough, we're going to add uh, six more RS-25 engines and cap them off. We'll use the uh, shielded procedural tank for the top of these boosters, but the rest of them are uh, unshielded. And we're gonna go dump a whole bunch of points into uh, build rate, because this is a sandbox, and we can do that. So, now that we're out on the pad, launch, it uh, gets up pretty quick, as you would expect for something that's basically built to have nothing but a high thrust to weight ratio. And a little bit off angle, but uh, it seems to have worked. We're clear of the atmosphere now, so no worry about it exploding. And there's an orbit. I mean, kind of. We're just going to double check the numbers here. Uh, not technically an orbit, but it was 2 minutes 20 seconds, and at least gives me something to work from. So here's attempt 2 on the uh, Type 1 prototype, and we'll just get it up to speed. The boosters will explode, and so will our center tank careening through our core. Yeah, alright, well, let's try something different. Uh, I'd be a little embarrassed, really, if I just uh, got 2 minutes 20 seconds right off the bat, but we can't count that. It was not technically in orbit. Periapsis was below 140 kilometers. So, we're going to try a single RS-25 core and four uh, F-1 boosters. And we'll just uh, see how well this happens. We'll just do some micromanaging of our fuel and everything like that. And angles, and then uh, go ahead and get it all out to the launch pad. Here we are. And launch. Much, much quicker acceleration than our previous model, which obviously is going to create some issues. There they are. Uh, something exploded. Anyway, I figure maybe we need to make sure these boosters can separate properly would be a good thing if they didn't slap into our core stage or take out our engine so we're going to do uh, lots of these little separatron rockets all over the place in hopes of getting them clear of the core we're also going to upgrade our engines because i completely forgot about that we've got the f1a and the rs 25 de i believe you know what while we're here let's just go ahead and throw on some other boosters while we're at it too because uh thrust to weight ratio and stuff Anyway, we'll get out on the pad with one of our first variants, now with upgraded engines, and we'll see exactly what this thing can do, uh, because I had a bunch of them queued up in the build list. And we seem to have exploded our heat shield. No worries, we don't need it anymore, so why the hell not? Angle down, and there's an orbit! Yes, it is a legit orbit, and it was done in 2 minutes and 12 seconds. So that is now our time to beat. And uh, here's our new one. Yeah. Maybe too many boosters. Not enough struts. So. <laughs> this is our first prototype, just uh, upgraded with many, many, many more engines, trying to beat our 2 minute 12 second mark. But uh, I have messed up the cross feeding. They all drain uniformly. That did not make orbit. So here's our 4F1 design again, now with separatrons and no added boosters. With a single RS-25 at the core. Eh, not much of a different result. So, uh, I figure maybe we can just improve on this design. It does seem to have some of the best uh, thrust to weight we can manage. But I think we just need to get these boosters clear and prevent them from slamming into the core stage. So apparently they hold well, we decelerate faster than they do once they have been separated, which is what's causing them to slam into stuff. Uh, and you know what? Being kind of an overachiever, let's add a whole lot of very tiny solid motors and then get it out onto the pad and give it a try. 
So here's our newest upgraded version with a solid assist takeoff as if it needed any more thrust to weight ratio. The solid's clear just fine. Coming up on booster sep. They are finally clear and we overheat our engine. Fantastic. I think that one warrants another try. So exact same vehicle, no changes. Booster's away. They're solids away. Booster's away. Get the angle. And just right at the orbit. Not in orbit. Fail. Well, it was, I don't know. I think this one can do it. I really do. But, you know, I, we should always be trying new things while we've got those queued in the build list. I think we're on to something with that kind of style. So, uh, I figure why not just try it with Carolox engines? They do provide lots more thrust, typically, and ISP is not really of our concern. So we're just going to try five F1As. And, uh, as long as we can get these boosters to separate appropriately. So we'll just try some of these Separatron motors. Lots of them. And you know what? While we're here, why not just more boosters? Hmm. That M1 engine did look tempting, but I think we're just going to stick with a uh, straight-up F1A uh, configuration for this one. We just need to, again, make sure that we can separate out our boosters accordingly. Looks good. Let's try it out. Engines are lit, and we're off the pad. Man, that's fast. Collision on separation. Of course. Let's try it again, just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. We're up. Collision on separation. That's not going to work, is it? Well, uh, more separatrons, perhaps? Let's just decorate the whole thing. I did not mean to take those boosters off. Let's also angle these outer boosters down, see if we can't get them to clear the core. They're away. So far, so good. Um, oh, we overheated. We blew up our core. The main part kept going. Not that it matters. It's not going to orbit. So uh, that might be pushing on the verge of just too fast. So here's this M1 engine that I thought was just absolutely fascinating. This is an insanely powerful uh, liquid hydrogen engine. So why not give it a try? And I figure let's uh, upgrade it best we can. And we'll pair it with uh, a couple of these RS25s. We'll just get them angled in a little bit, oriented so that they're not uh, blowing stuff up. And we'll have them cross-feed into the core, since we have a common fuel now, and lots and lots and lots of <laughs> thrust to deal with. We just need to make sure we can get these boosters clear, and then we'll just copy them over for another set, and get our... Uh, didn't mean to pull those off again. Alright, and we'll get our fueling set up, and uh, make sure all of that is legit. We'll check our fueling diagrams. Looks pretty good. Um... I will just bounce around looking at the rocket a few times, trying to figure if there's anything else I can do. Ah, uh, clamps. Clamps is what I can do, and I can upgrade those RS-25s. That definitely needs to happen. So, let's, uh, let's see if it works. Out here on the pad, engines are lit, we're up and moving. Clear the clouds, first set clears just fine. And we'll just angle ourselves over, second set clears just fine. This one's looking pretty good. And angle it in, come on. Uh, not in orbit. I think that one does warrant another attempt. So we'll just get it right back here out on the pad. Launch. Boosters are clear, first set. Second set's clear, we're on just the uh, upgraded M1 engine now. And just gotta keep the angle so that it doesn't overheat and explode. Not in orbit. Not anywhere near in orbit. That's really disappointing me. So we're going to try our F1 design again, because I think this thing actually held promise. I think that if we can get the angle right, and if the booster's clear, maybe solids are clear, boosters are clear, oh, overheat the engine and explode. Ugh. All right, more of this later. I am bent on beating that 2 minute 12 second mark, but thanks for hanging out for this uh, first episode of Challenge Accepted. Uh, I hope you guys will come back for the next one, but uh, until then, see you later.